Hey guys, welcome back. Um, okay, if you guys watched the last video, you know that I had the 350Z on the dyno and I was having some issues where I turned the boost up and we didn't really, we made way more torque, but not very much more power. So today, I found a solution. We're gonna get ready to test a few things so we can get some new information and then switch stuff out. You guys ready to check it out? I can't wait to show you what I ended up getting. Okay, so the turbo that we currently have on the car is the Rev 9 60-1, and that turbo is great up to like maybe eight or 10 pounds, but then after that, just doesn't have enough uh, flow uh, to get the exhaust out of the turbo side, basically out of the hot side. So uh, the easiest solution to fix this problem is to just get a bigger turbo. So that's what we did. Um, I'm so excited, guys, to show you my new, uh, 6266 Gen 2 Precision Ball Bearing Turbo. So, this particular turbo has a bigger exhaust wheel. So the actual physical wheel space is bigger across to let more gas out. And on top of it, I was able to purchase um, this custom housing. The biggest housing that they offer in this T3 option is a 0.82 T3, but luckily another company makes a housing that works with this turbo that is a 1.06. And a 1.06 is nearly as big as the smaller like 0.81 T4. So instead of having to switch my whole turbo kit out to a T4, we are kind of opting to keep the turbo kit the same and see if just changing the turbo and the housing to a more appropriate size of exhaust will actually allow us to make the horsepower we're looking for. But just throwing a new turbo on isn't really good enough in my mind because I kind of need to know more information than that. So obviously I know the 60-1 was the turbo that Turbonetics had designed for that turbo kit to make between 400 and 500 horsepower, you know, depending on the situation. We made 430 on one pull with the you know mixture a little rich and not very much timing in it. So I imagine I could have easily made 450 horsepower with just a few more pulls, but I was really nervous with the amount of back pressure after about 5,000 RPM. When the torque peaks so hard and then falls down, it makes you think like, you know, that amount of torque that early is probably gonna break the 350Z rod or piston. So what I wanna do is ramp that torque on kind of slowly. That way we can allow the car to just continue to pull all the way to redline. Okay, so for some of you that aren't super familiar on how this turbo kit works, we have one exhaust manifold on this side and one on this side, and they're just the stock 350Z exhaust manifolds. Bolted to those is a crossover pipe that comes to a Y piece, and this manifold goes down to the Y, this manifold comes over to the Y, and then they come forward into one pipe, and it comes up to the turbo housing. So, my thought is, because this turbo wheel and this housing are too small, after about 10 pounds of boost, it starts to build up too much back pressure in this housing. So what I propose is that we put an exhaust manifold back pressure sensor before the turbo somewhere. I went ahead and got like a, this looks like an inch and a half round tubing, and I found these interesting pieces that I cut off of something else that already had holes in the bottom, which is very convenient. And I'm going to weld these on the ends as caps. Um, and then I'm just gonna add like an, like an eighth inch NTP uh, you know, fitting to the top so that we will be able to screw on a pressure sensor uh, to mitigate some of the exhaust um, temperature and obviously your motor fires, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever. And when those pulses come through, they can make the sensor kind of bounce up and down in back pressure. So to kind of soften and dampen that to more of an even signal for the reading, <clears throat> what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some actual this is just kitchen stuff. This is steel wool for cleaning, but we are gonna stuff this canister chuck full of this steel wool so that 
Obviously the manifold pressure will still come through it, but it has to kind of fight its way through that steel wool and hopefully even some of those pulses out before it gets um, to the back side of this sensor so that we can get a little bit more clean reading on the dyno. Now what I'm hoping to see out of this is if I can get the manifold uh, pressure sensor installed on the current setup, I'll put it back on the dyno and make one last dyno pull, which I'm a little terrified to do. I don't really like how much, I can tell the car has too much back pressure for sure, but what I would really be interested to see is when the car makes 15 pounds of boost and then starts to fall off, how much back pressure are we making? I'm guessing at 7,000 RPM, what if we have like 30 back pressure at 15 PSI, like two to one? What I'm hoping to do is just get the data from our current setup so I can show you guys what happens after you go over you know, 10 pounds of boost in your 350Z on this turbo kit and then switch to our bigger stuff here and then take a look and see what happens to back pressure and then hopefully our horsepower continues to go all the way out and we can finally make it to our goal of at least 500 horsepower. Okay, so I got that canister welded up. Um, came out pretty good. You know, I've got the steel wool in there to help dampen the pulses. We're gonna mount this up in the engine bay somewhere and I'll run a steel line to the bottom of the canister. I don't know, it's kind of dark under here, but I was gonna take pressure from the uh, passenger side because I think that side might be the most restricted. That way I can see the highest level of back pressure on the motor. Okay, I got the back pressure sensor in. I ran the line up into the engine bay. You can see it's uh, just a normal pressure sensor. We got our canister, and then I just used a piece of brake line and a flare tool just to run this up from the manifold. So now it'll get direct pressure from this bank of the engine, and we can compare this pressure versus manifold boost pressure and see what our pressure ratio is. And then we can see like, you know, how maxed out this uh, Rev9 turbo kit uh, turbo was. Okay, so I got it on the dyno right now. Uh, 350 ZZs all strapped up, ready to go. Um, we got that pressure sensor in there. You guys can see, check it out right here. So it's in there. I've got the dyno kind of reading it. We'll go make a dyno pull right now and see what the back pressure is. And then we'll overlay the two graphs, the ones we did before with boost pressure, and then we'll lay back pressure over it. So check this out, um, on the old dyno poles, 14 pounds of boost. Um, and then today when we dynoed, I measured back pressures instead of turbo boost. So now if you see at 14 pounds of boost, we're making 27 PSI of back pressure, but that's not the whole story. As the torque starts to fall off, you can see back pressure climbing even past two to one. Um, I think the peak value is, let me see. 30, 31 or 32 PSI and just climbing. So just like I thought, at peak torque, we're already two to one on back pressure versus pressure. And by the time we get to the upper end, like past 6,000 RPM, we're like two and a half to one. So obviously we need a bigger turbo. This is really exciting because I have a feeling once we get a bigger housing, we can get that back pressure number down. We're gonna have a really efficient car and hopefully see some real numbers. Okay, so that's some super cool information that we learned on the dyno. We are way too high in back pressure. So we'll go ahead and uh, switch the turbo out and do some more testing. I ran out of time this week to get it done, but it'll be the first thing in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.